Do you own a car? Do the repairs leave you feeling confused or vulnerable? Next, join OCP investigator Doug Numbers as he meets with Greg Skolnick, owner of MotorWorks in Rockville, to find out what consumers can do to be educated and prepared. Greg is also a business development coach and mentor to auto repair shop owners around the country. Hi, Greg. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Well, thank How are you. things? Thank you very much. Things are well. What can I do for you? I'm here today to talk to you about consumers and car repair. How can people be prepared when they come into a shop so you can help them, basically? I mean, what do they, what do they need to do to be prepared if they come in with a problem or a service? Most of the time, the clients come in, they don't really know what they need or want, and it's our responsibility to sort of diagnose not only the car but them too and make sure that uh, we can all work together. We don't do this whole adversarial thing. I know that in the consumer affairs world a lot of times it's this what can I get from you and what can you get from me and it's not like that. We, you don't see counters here for a reason you know um, so this is important uh, that, that we sit together and work as a partnership. It is a partnership with the clientele. For a first-time client, if you're not sure about where to go and, you're, and someone recommends you to go to a particular shop, check them out. Ask questions. Uh, start with their website. Uh, most places need, these days have websites and um, they have all kinds of um, certifications are, are big. The uh, ASC certification, Automotive Service Excellence is important. Hey, Sean, I grabbed the owner's manual out of this car. I just want you know that's why things open. Long before they come in to see me, generally right after they get their car, they should be reading this. This is the, uh, you know, an owner's manual. They're, you can see how thick they are. But um, this, there's a lot of information in here about the car that is really important to, um, to the overall condition of keeping the car in, in sure. like new condition throughout its lifetime, which is by what the way the best way to squeeze as much money out of the car y as you can mm -hmm. is to keep it for a long time. Also, if people read their owner's manual, it helps them understand how their vehicle functions and may right. save them a trip here if they right. think something's wrong, but they right. haven't switched it on or, or tur sure. turned turned the key on the right way or set something the correct way. Not, not only that, Doug, but I will tell you this, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I think is so important and we, we quiz our clients quite a bit on it. When they call up and they say, my car's doing something strange, because they're the ones that are in the car every day. Right. They know what it sounds like. They, they're, they know what it feels like more than, than we do. We, because we were only specialize in certain brands of vehicles, we know them a lot better. Right. But each car is an individual, right? So, so they know that the car doesn't make that kind of a noise then they're, they know when to alert us. So we, we do push our clients to, to let us know if you, something seems out of the ordinary. And sometimes it's not a big deal. You know, it's sometimes it's not a big deal at all. Um, reading the manual, usually in the back, they'll have something about maintenance, and we'll discuss maintenance in just a little while. Sure. Because I really think that there's some problems with the way the manuals describe maintenance. Okay. Um, and I think that there's a lot of shops out there that would agree with me on that. We've, um, we've been experiencing a few problems with cars that have been following the, the maintenance minders on the cars, right. and they talk about 10,000 mile oil changes. changes and stuff like and that. And then after right. 50,000 miles, the car needs a new it needs an engine re-ring or something like that. So um, those are the people that, that are trying to give you the impression that the car isn't really, uh, it doesn't really need a lot of maintenance, maintenance and right. I'm sort of big on maintenance. Greg, modern cars have gotten much more computerized. Oh you yeah. Know, computer controls a lot of different sure. functions in a motor vehicle right. nowadays. People, a lot of people get upset, have some anxiety about that. They're not sure what's going on with their car. You know, how can you give them, I guess, a little reassurance or tell them that, you know, if the check engine light comes on, it's not necessarily the end of the world, I guess. It's not. Right. Actually, it's really a good thing. Um, modern cars today are so complex that the auto manufacturers actually got together years ago and decided they had to have sort of a system to help the average technician be able to maintain um, the car. And because there's so much going on under the hood and behind the scenes that you don't know about while you're driving the car, the car is always monitoring a whole bunch of different systems. When that check engine light comes on on the car, there could be 70, 80 different things, reasons for that thing to come on. It's something could be simple like a, a, a leaking gas cap or the gas cap isn't 
pipe True. or something more important like a fuel injector has failed and it's causing uh, it's spilling fuel and it's going to destroy your catalytic converter. So uh, it is really important to pay attention to the check engine light. But more than anything else, uh, again, part of this whole thing with a trust relationship with your technician, they're going to use uh, rather expensive and complex equipment to attach to your car to, to, do, to start the diagnosis. The cars will store a uh, trouble code and uh, it will give the technician a place to start. Okay, we know that we have, a, say, for example, an evaporative emission failure, which is a pretty common one. Evaporative emission system on the car keeps the gasoline from evaporating out of the car. It's good for fuel mileage. It's really great for the environment. So um, it's really important. So if that system, which is supposed to test itself to make sure it's sealed, um, fails, it will set a light on the dashboard. And when that happens, it sets a code in the computer's memory. We go in with equipment and it says, here's a very specific code for this problem, and we start through this diagnostic tree. It's a lot more complex than it used to be, I and mean, that's one of the reasons we changed names from mechanics to technicians, technicians sure. because Certainly. we're really, it's way more technically oriented now. No more carburetors, no right. more points and condensers, right. none of that's, right. that's none all of gone. That we right. started on. But it's actually yeah. a really good thing. Yeah. What helps you guys? You know, if I come in and say my car's dead, that doesn't help you. Right. You know. Right. You know what can I? What can we say to consumers to say you know, how to help your repair shop out? Fix okay. your car properly the first time. For, right. First and foremost, I would ask a new client to come in with an open mind okay. and don't come in with the chip on your shoulder because you've been burned all across town. Okay. Understand that not all shops do that. Right. And actually it's much better nowadays. It used to be a lot worse sure. in this industry. The industry is cleaning itself up mm -hmm. and it's getting much better, which is probably a good thing for you guys. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Don't withhold information about the car. Okay. Sometimes they'll do that. They'll mm -hmm. sort of give you a little bit, and you know, and you can tell when they're doing that. Right. You know, they're not giving you the whole thing, and you got to pull it out of them. If you got to pull out information out of the customer, usually there's it's because they've been burned right. many right. times, right. and they're very uh, distrustful. And trust is something that's critical, yet it is very fragile. So you have to build up over time. This is not something you can do quickly. So Doug, one of the things that's interesting is when a, a new client calls in for the first time and they've never been here, a lot of times, first of all, they'll be on, have been on our website, and so they get a little bit of feel for who we are and kind of the culture of our business. Um, but interestingly enough, one of the questions that they almost invariably ask is, how much is a Repair. blank, sure, you know, everybody whatever. Wants to, everybody like, wants to know how much idea, it is. Right. What they're really asking is, can you help me with my problem and not take advantage of me at the same time? Well, and consumers also need to understand you can't diagnose a car over the phone. Right. You know, you don't have a button on your phone that you can push that says, yep, your car needs this, you know, or anything like that. It's right. You know, and, and it may be a simple repair or it may be a complicated repair. Which is where the trust factor comes yes. in. Right. Um, so you need to find somebody who's ethical or feels you feel comfortable with and ask questions. Greg, you've given us some great tips. Uh -huh. Read your owner's manual. Right. Do your maintenance. Yes. Build a relationship with your shop. Absolutely critical. Right. What else, I mean, it's summer driving season. What right. else could we tell consumers to just try to be a little more prepared so they don't get stuck on the road, hopefully? Well, the main things that get beat up in the uh, summertime are batteries and um, air conditioning systems because they're getting the most use. But tire pressure is important. Fluid levels uh, in under hood are really important. Um, that That's the basic stuff that needs to be looked at. If the battery is more than three years old, you should have it professionally tested to make sure that it has capacity to, to restart the car because nobody wants to get to the beach and then go click, click, click. Gotcha. Um, they can also make sure that they are um, that, that a new customer, you're checking out a new shop because the shop is the one going to be able to help you identify potential problems on the car. But if you're a first time uh, client, make sure you do some homework with uh, things online reviews, like the Yelp, uh, right. Andy's List, these types of places are, are, are good to get other people's views. Ask your neighbors, ask your friends, friends. people that you work with, who they like. And uh, that's probably the best referral we get are from our own clients when they refer a new client to right. us. It's the, it's the highest quality. That's great. And so, I would also say, you know, put a plug in for my office, see if they've received any complaints on the shop or your local Better Business Bureau to see if they've had any complaints on the shop or any absolutely. issues. Absolutely, absolutely. Great, great stuff, Doug. Great, great. Now, Thank you, Greg. I gotta go to work. Okay. To get the heck out of here, <laughs> great. Good Thank you for your time, Greg. All I right. appreciate it. All right, take care now. <laughs> see you later. All right.